Welcome to hoop house number one. And this is what a hoop house looks like when you don't clean it out in the fall and you let it sit all winter with rotting old tomato vines, weeds, old hay, pile of hoses, just a disaster in here. Today it's cleanup day in hoop house number one. In two weeks there will be fresh tomatoes growing in these beds. Welcome back to hoop house number one. Nice and clean. We finally got some sun and we are ready for tomatoes. This hoop house was built in 2009. It is 40 feet long. I bought this hoop house from a farm that went out of business and originally it was 120 feet long when I bought it. And I came back here and put 40 feet of it up. And in 2013, I built 50 more feet of it. This is hoop house number two. You'll notice on the floor of hoop house number one here, we have pea stone. I didn't want this to be a dirt floor hoop house. I just don't like dealing with mud and weeds. So we put down the pea stone and originally in in this area here I was planting tomatoes in buckets and bags and all kinds of different things and uh, then I got the idea of digging a trench in the stone which I did and lined it with wood and then after one year the wood rotted away so I went down to the lumber yard to get some more wood and I saw that they had a pile of this stuff, which is Trex decking uh, and fascia board. And this is a piece of it here. And uh, it's uh, basically plastic and sawdust mixed together. And it doesn't rot. So I relined all of the trenches with the Trex. And it's been four years now, and it's totally great. So I just dug the trench, put down the treks, and then backfilled with the dirt, and the dirt holds the treks in place. So it's really, it's just sitting in the dirt. The uh, first two trenches here, I did the first two trenches and lived with that for a few years. And then last year, I added these outside two trenches the outside trenches are not, they don't have as much headroom above them, so I can't grow tomatoes there. But it's good for eggplants and uh, peppers and lettuce and kale and stuff like that. These trenches here, the inside trenches, have almost 10 feet of overhead height. And you'll see our tomatoes go right up to the roof. So let's go in the seed room and get an update on our tomatoes. All right, it has been two weeks since I did the potting up video. And I don't know if you remember, but these were much smaller. And they've been doing great in here. 16 hours of light. They are touching the bulbs, which is not ideal, but today is their last day in the room. They're coming out. Doing really great. Nice thick stems, green leaves, lots of new growth. Even our basil took off like crazy. And these are the eggplants. Looking perfect. So today I am gonna bring all these plants into the hoop house, 
where they will live the rest of their lives. And some of these are going to be going in the ground today, and some are going to be going in the ground over the next week or so in hoop house number two. So let's start moving plants. Here's a little gardening tip. If you ever buy a property, try and buy a commercial property that used to be a bakery. And before they leave, try and convince them to leave all of their bread racks behind because you will find them very useful. We got about 200 of these that the previous owners left behind. And it is probably one of the tools I use every single day around the garden, around the farm, in the hoop house, all over the place. Fantastic tool. Farewell Seed Room 2016. Good job. So I just took these guys out of the seed room and I, I had them outside in the sun for about five minutes before I got them into the hoop house here and they're already stressed out. You can see they're just kind of flopping down. But I have some shade cloth over them so they're not getting direct sun in the hoop house and they need water and they will perk back up. Come back in 10 minutes, check this out. Well, it's been about an hour and the eggplants have come back to life. I do plant tomatoes in the same place every year in, in these trenches. Uh, I know you're supposed to rotate your crops, but in here I keep things super clean and uh, I watch for diseases, haven't had any problems. It's about the fifth year of planting tomatoes in the same trenches. And what I do is every other year, I actually scoop out the trenches, take about four to six inches of the topsoil off, put it in the compost pile, then take fresh compost, and then fill them back up. So I am kind of rotating the soil, but putting them in the same place. This year is an off year, so I'm just gonna be taking the compost, putting it in all the trenches, and then I'll water everything, fork it in, and then we're ready to plant our brand new tomatoes. Have our trenches filled with compost and the soil's been moistened and we have our plants. These are tomato plants which are about seven weeks old, six to seven weeks old from seed. And these particular ones got a little bit leggy in the seed room. Uh, they just shot up to the light. And these are called sun golds which tend to get a little bit leggy. But what I do is take the bottom few leaves, branches, off of the plant. Dig a hole deep enough so you can plant this plant right down to there. This goes in the hole, backfill, and I make a little well. And I'm even going to take a couple of leaves off of the stem because 
I don't want any leaves touching the dirt because then anything that might be in the soil can can go right up the plant and cause problems so take a few leaves off no big deal there you go so I'm gonna take these bottom two branches off of right off the tomato and it looks a little bit tall and spindly but I'm gonna plant it like this Keep that growing straight up. This plant is very floppy and leggy. Just take those bottom branches off. So that's one row of tomatoes planted. We have sun golds and sappos. Both are sun golds are cherries and sappos are kind of like golf ball sized bright red tomatoes. It is now May 10th and I expect to be eating tomatoes around the middle to end of June. So about five weeks from now. In about two weeks, these will be a couple feet tall and once they get too big to support themselves, I don't deal with stakes, I don't deal with cages, fencing. I have sort of strings or ropes tied to the top of the hoop house that just hang down over each plant. As the plants grow, I just wrap them around the string and they climb right up the string perfectly. And these plants should reach the roof of the hoop house by mid to end of July and they will be producing tomatoes, like I said, starting around end of June. I will also come through here and put a soaker hose around all the plants, and I will be mulching with straw to keep the weeds down and keep the soil wet. As we get on in the season, I will be doing a follow-up video, an update video to this, uh, and I will show you if, if anything happens to these tomatoes and we start getting any kind of problems with any disease or, or fungal problems, I will address that in a future video. As they get taller, you're going to start getting lots of suckers growing out from the bottom and from all of these, these uh, crotches here. I'll show you how to prune all those off. If you don't have access to a hoop house uh, or any way of covering your plants, the same principle applies when you're planting them outdoors, is you can plant them nice and deep. I always take off the bottom few leaves and branches because you don't want anything touching soil except for the stem. Uh, anything that will touch down on the soil can bring diseases from the soil up into the plant and we don't want that to happen. The things I've learned over the last eight years of growing tomatoes is the drier you can keep the leaves, the better you are. So keep the leaves off of the soil. Don't spray water over the top of the plants. Always feed your tomatoes and water your tomatoes with a soaker hose. If you can, somehow cover them up with hoops, plastic, grow them indoors. In any way, you will have a much better crop and you'll have much better tomatoes. That wraps up part three of how I grow tomatoes. There will be a part four once these guys get a little more established. I'm gonna cover pruning, training, dealing with diseases, and harvesting tomatoes. If you learned anything, please uh, click the thumbs up. That feels really good. Check out the rest of my videos on my channel. 
And uh, I am accepting new subscribers at this time, uh, so get in while you can. My channel is young, but it is growing. I'm going to try some new sign-off slogans to end my videos, but I haven't thought of any yet.